Political battle lines are being drawn in the U.S. after a ruling from a federal judge that could jeopardize access to a widely used abortion pill. And the reality of our courts right now is very disturbing. This ruling is in extreme abuse of power. It is an extraordinary example of judicial overreach. It may be a come a point where House Republicans on the appropriation side have to defund uh, FDA programs that don't make sense. Conflicting court rulings have pushed the status of the abortion pill mefepristone into legal uncertainty after a Texas ruling placed a hold on the federal approval of it. While at the same time, a Washington state ruling directed authorities not to make any changes to access to the drug. Last hour, I spoke with Dr. Christopher Labos. He says restricting access to abortion drugs will lead to more surgical procedures. Being able to treat something with medication rather than with a procedure is much easier, it's much cheaper, it has less complications. So if you limit access to this medication in the U.S., what you're going to do is you're going to have a lot of women just ha being more difficult to access abortion. It's going to delay their ability to get abortions. They're likely going to have to transition to more procedure-based um, approaches like a dilatation and, and uh, curatage. Uh, and that's just going to lead to more costs and potentially more complications. That was Dr. Christopher Labos speaking to us earlier this morning. But for more on this now, we're joined by Kemlin Namard. She is the executive director at the Women's Health Clinic in Winnipeg, and she joins us from Winnipeg this morning. Kemlin, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. I'll start by asking. The... Yes, absolutely. Uh, I'll start by asking for your reaction to the U.S. District Judge's decision to, to order, order this hold on the approval of the abortion drug mefepristone. Uh, shock, dismay, um, appall, <laughs> be some starters, um, disbelief, yeah. Uh, you know, that drug has been approved in Europe for, I think, 25 years or more. It's been approved in the U.S. for 20 and in Canada for about 10. So, um, yeah. What kind of impact do you think that this could have on people who are trying to access safe abortions? Yeah, like I think um, definitely if you're talking about people in um, rural locations, especially um, remote locations, uh, that will have a, a very direct impact because at this point you don't need to come into a doctor's office necessarily to have an abortion because it's just a, um, a couple pills that you can get a prescription for um, under the guidance of a doctor. I think the other thing is that um, not having access to medication abortion means that more women are going to have to get abortions, um, going to have to get surgical abortions, which does create more complications potentially. Um, yeah, like having you know having access to the the medication abortions just has really made abortions that much more accessible. I think for more people and um, limiting that access will do exactly that. It will limit access to abortions for more people. How should people in Canada be thinking about this? Because we've been waiting for this decision out of Texas for a couple of weeks now. People might be watching this, monitoring this, and thinking, well, this is happening in the United States. It's not happening here. So how do you think Canadians should be thinking about this? Well, I think as Canadians, we need to be on guard. Um, you know, we do have a different legal system. We do have, you know, so I don't, it's not comparing apples to apples, but what happens in the States does have an impact on us in Canada, whether, you know, whether it's just, it's uh, like the rhetoric that, that seeps over the border, right? And so I think as Canadians, we need to not only stand on guard, we need to actually get out and talk to talk to each other, talk to our, our friends, our families, as well as our political representatives, um, provincially and federally, and let them know loud and clear that this is not acceptable, this is not something we will accept here. And in fact, we want to make sure that we have more access to abortions in Canada across the country, no matter where you are located in this country. And I think that's the message we need to be sending to our political leaders. And how would you go about doing that? What would be some examples of, of how you could increase access to safe abortions in this country, like you say, everywhere in this country, rather than just in some in some areas in some of those major city centers? Well, this is 
a basic medical procedure. It should be available. Medication abortions particularly can be done by your general practitioner, but we need more doctors trained. So this is something that the College of Physicians should make sure that is available through medical schools. Every doctor should be trained to provide medication abortions. Um, our provincial and federal leaders need to actually fund more abortions in public settings, not just in hospitals, but also in clinics to make sure that it's available no matter where you are. As an example, right now in Manitoba, there are very few places that you can get access to abortion, it, you know, um, and certainly surgical abortions. There's really very few places. There's us at the Women's Health Clinic, the Health Science Center in Winnipeg, as well as the hospital in Brandon. Those are the places that you can get access to surgical abortions. And um, that if you're anywhere outside of that, you have to travel great distances to get access to surgical abortion. So again, ensuring that abortions are accessible no matter where you are in this country. I think rural, northern, remote, in an urban city, it does. It shouldn't matter. That is, I think, what needs to happen as well. And Kemlin, back last June when Roe v. Wade was overturned, you, of course, were part of our coverage. We spoke with you then, and you said that that, that overturning did have the potential to impact Canada or for us to see uh, some of the repercussions of that here. Have you been seeing that? Have you been seeing people from the U.S. trying to seek care in Canada? Um, I, I mean, there definitely has been some, but I, I like I don't, you know, we don't um, just for the the safety of people that we serve, particularly knowing how how um, many jurisdictions in the U.S. are persecuting both practitioners clinics as well as people seeking access to abortions you know i think it's a, a little bit unsafe to talk about that, talk about that um but it i mean it has an it has had an impact in lots of other ways too and i think one of the ways that we see it the most is around the rhetoric right and um and how that can impact our political discourse here in canada and i think we we cannot um like i can't over uh, emphasize how bad of an impact that can have. And so that's why I think it's really important for us to actually continue to talk about this and make sure that we are talking to our political leaders about how important this is for us as Canadians and that we won't stand for anything close to what's happening in the States. Hmm. For this morning, we're going to leave it there, but we do appreciate your time and your perspective on this this morning. Kemlin, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Executive Director at the Women's Health Clinic in Winnipeg, Kemlin Nemard.